In a bizarre step to bolster the cult of Xi Jinping, the Christian minority in the Jiangxi province of southeast China have been now advised to replace the image of Jesus Christ with that of President Xi Jinping. With that logic, the Jesus Christ would not would not pull the poor uh, Christians out of their poverty, but President Xi Jinping could. On the back of this logic, the Christian poor in the Jiangxi province have been asked to take down the images of Jesus Christ, the crucifixes and rosary beads, and instead replace them with the posters of President Xi Jinping. What has drawn sharp criticism in this promotion of the cult of Xi Jinping is that those who do not replace the images of Jesus Christ with that of Xi Jinping will not be provided with the poverty alleviation policies of the government. Services and funding by the Chinese government also in fact uh, included as a penalty for not conforming to that norm. The Jiangxi province has more than 11 million members of the Christian community who live in abject poverty. According to some surveys, members of the Christian community across the whole, whole of China is uh, about 90 million, which outnumbers the total membership of, of the Communist Party in the country. President Xi Jinping, in the promotion of his personality cult, is trying to recreate a similar practice where after the Cultural Revolution in China, people used to hang up the posters of Mao Zedong. <laughs> A sobbing wife mourns her husband's final moments after he was left in a vegetative state and shackled to his hospital bed following his alleged torture in a Chinese labor camp. He's one of thousands in prison for their beliefs. Some left emaciated, others with rotted and blistering skin, allegedly tortured and beaten. Now, Fox 11 is being taken inside those Chinese labor camps with undercover footage never seen before, revealing what life is like for political prisoners, filmed by those willing to risk everything. If the government knew I filmed those videos, I wouldn't be here with you. My life would be gone. <laughs> and one distraught California family is fighting back. They say their loved one was tortured and killed in a Chinese labor camp almost 20 years ago. Her body still being held by the camp to this day. And they're going directly to the source to get it back. My name is Yifei Wang. The party wants us to forget about my sister, about my brother. And all the others. China is using the Zoom to stifle dissent. It is using testing kits to create a global gene data bank, meaning China is collecting your genetic data. Brace for the next privacy scandal. And this is not a far-fetched idea. China is doing it already. It has been doing it for a while, using genetic data against its own minorities. What is to stop Beijing from using it against the world next? China says it is helping the world fight the Wuhan virus with test kits and medical supplies. First, the test kits were faulty. And now the world has spotted another catch. China's test kits are a tool. A tool to help China compile genetic data. Beijing is creating a massive DNA database. The world should be ready for the next privacy scandal. Abuse of genetic data. Why is this important? Because genetic codes can help pharmaceutical companies develop better drugs. But here's the flip side. It could also lead to genetic-based surveillance. America has launched an investigation. The focus is on one particular Chinese test kit maker. BGI, formerly known as the Beijing Genomics Institute. This company has sent more than 10 million test kits to over 80 countries. The concern is BGI and the Chinese government are partners in crime. China is using BGI in Xinjiang for the gene sequencing of Uyghur Muslims. In 2016, BGI agreed to create a Xinjiang gene bank. In 2017, BGI said its headquarters in Xinjiang would include a forensics expertise center. 
In the same year, BGI studied China's ethnicities, compared the majority Han and minority Uyghurs. Such studies could be used to justify the persecution of Uyghur Muslims. In other words, China could use genetic data to justify its human rights abuse, and BGI is helping it. Now the same BGI gets data from 80 countries. Genetic data that China can use. BGI's spokesperson said that the group takes data protection seriously, that is not owned or controlled by the government. But BGI has no option but to cooperate with the Chinese government. According to Chinese law, companies must support the government in matters of national security. The U.S. government has already placed export bans on two Chinese surveillance technology makers, Hikvision and Dahua. Why? For helping the Chinese government with its crackdown in Xinjiang. So, BGI will remain under the scanner, and so will China, for using genetic science in racial and ethnic cleansing. Bureau Report, Weon, World is One. From strict lockdown measures to now massive pool parties. It's an unusual sight in these unusual times. A pool party in Wuhan, China, the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak. And as you can probably see, this wasn't just any little old get together. Look at this. No new local cases are reported there, so residents decided to ditch their masks and social distancing guidelines and throw a bash. Thousands of people piled on top of each other, a DJ, dancing. This is at a water park in Wuhan, and it comes as the city emerged from a 76-day lockdown just four months ago. During that time, 11 million residents were mostly confined to their Chinese homes. Chinese authorities have changed the ending of a Bible story. The story claims Jesus is a sinner and even that he killed a woman. This as China is expected to renew a deal with the Vatican. NTD's Juliet Song has more on that. China and the Vatican are reportedly about to renew a historic deal. That's as a Chinese textbook has been found to paint Jesus as a murderer. In the original Bible story, a woman was about to be stoned for committing adultery, but Jesus stepped in, pardoning her sin and letting her go. But the Chinese textbook describes a different ending. It says when the crowd receded, Jesus stoned the woman to death, saying, I too am a sinner. But if the law could only be executed by men without blemish, the law would be dead. The textbook is used by vocational school students. It teaches professional ethics and law and has been approved by a review committee under China's education ministry. The discovery comes as the Chinese regime and the Vatican are reportedly about to extend a deal. It was signed two years ago and allows both Beijing and the Pope to appoint bishops in China. China is home to about 12 million Catholics. They're split into two groups, state-run and underground. Pastors in the country's state-run associations are appointed by the communist regime. State-run associations reject the Pope's authority, while underground Catholics recognize it and are often persecuted for it. But under the deal, the Pope has final say about the appointment of bishops in China and is recognized as the leader of the church. After it was signed, the Pope also recognized seven clergies previously ordained by the communist regime. Some conservative critics consider the approval a sellout to the communist regime. The deal is about to expire next month, and U.S. is calling the Vatican to abandon it. In an editorial, Pompeo wrote that human rights conditions for religious believers have deteriorated amid the deal. He cited an example of a Chinese Catholic who was beaten and taken into custody for refusing to join the state-run church. On Twitter, Pompeo also wrote, the Vatican endangers its moral authority should it renew the deal. He's expected to visit the Pope at the end of this month. Reporting by Juliet Song, NTD News. We're also following the major news from the Vatican tonight. Pope Francis voicing support for same-sex civil unions, the first pope in history to do so. The pope saying homosexual people have the right to be in a family, that they are children of God. Here's our foreign correspondent, James Longman, tonight. Tonight, an historic shift from the leader of an ancient institution. 
Pope Francis becoming the first pope in the Catholic Church's 2,000-year history to endorse civil unions for gay couples. This is a man who cries with humanity. In the new documentary, Francesco, the pope says homosexual people have a right to be in a family. They are children of God and have a right to a family. It's a major departure from the position of the Vatican's own doctrinal office. The pope adding, what we have to create is a civil union law. That way, they are legally covered. I stood up for that. The pontiff has called for civil unions in the past, but before he became pope. The emphasis on the legitimacy of the LGBT family is also notable. Experts calling it a monumental moment. It's a real way um, of not only speaking pastorally um, to this group of people, but also uh, speaking lovingly and making them feel more welcome in the church. Conservative Catholics, though, tonight are calling for clarity. Thomas Tobin, Bishop of Providence, Rhode Island, saying the church cannot support the acceptance of objectively immoral relationships. But Francis's words are striking a chord with a younger generation. I never thought that I would see something like that in my lifetime. 29-year-old Nicholas Traxler from Minnesota says the Pope's comments speak to his heart. It's a difficult road for LGBTQ Catholics. I value my faith and my sexuality as equal parts of my identity. But it hasn't always been that way. Pope Francis has cast himself as the modernizing pope, but he's faced huge opposition from within his own clergy. This latest move could mean the biggest backlash yet, but he may feel he has no choice if he's to survive in a modern age. David? All right, James Longman with us tonight. James, thanks.